Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 8 this morning. Good morning, church. Let's go to Psalms chapter 8. O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? The right, um, the right um, translation of that place is, what is man that your mind is so full of him? What is man that your mind is so full of him? Um, and the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Um, that's also supposed to be Elohim, um, not angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the parts of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Once again, I need to read that because it seems that a lot of you didn't see yourself in that scripture. That scripture was giving or depicting who you are. It, in fact, David, the psalmist, was beginning to give a picture of who you are in the scheme of God. So, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Now he comes into us says, out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. So the purpose for your manifestation is to silence the enemy and the avenger. <laughs> David was saying, when I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man? What is man that your mind is so full of him and that you visit him? What he was saying also, is that according to the prayers that have been offered today, your, our mind, God's mind is full of us. That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he has, the, the, another version, he says he has written us on the palm of, a, of his hands. But another version says that you have tattooed us. A tattoo cannot be removed. Uh, nowadays they use laser, but it's really not, never the same. But, 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 but a tattoo, that means that God has tattooed us on the palm of his hands to an extent that every time he looks at his palm, he sees you. That's why it says, what is man that your mind is so full? God cannot forget. He, said, he says, though a nursing, he says, a nursing mother cannot forget her suckling babe. He says, even though the nursing mother does, God had to use a parallel that it is impossible for a nursing mother to, to forget her suckling babe. But even if there are situations that they have, I will never leave you nor forsake you because you are tattooed on the palm of his hands. Whenever God opens up his hands, he sees you. Amen. 
You have made him a little lower than Elohim. You have crowned him with glory and honor. That's your portion. Crowned with glory and honor. And God has given you dominion over the works of your hands. You will walk in dominion in the name of Jesus. Okay, Acts chapter 2. Seems some of you are not awake this morning. May the Lord awaken you. Amen. All right. In fact, let's start from verse 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, sold their possessions and goods, divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Verse 46. Let me just share something that I just talked to. So continually daily with one accord in the temple, breaking of bread from house to house. For the progress of the church, for the greatness of the church, there is, it is important for the foundation, stability, increase, multiplication of the church is totally dependent on the house. They broke bread from house to house. That brings me to understand that as was said during the marriage um, during the family life convention. The, you, 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 you do not know the importance of what your house carries. Because the scripture said, if there was not house, they would not be able to break bread from house to house. With their food, with gladness and simplicity of heart. What it means, a house is supposed to be so glad and so simple that people should be able to come and fellowship. We are in the days of the apostles. If your, if your house is so posh that nobody can come into it, it, you cannot fulfill the next verse. If your house is a place of war and turmoil, then you are not breaking, you're not, you're, you're not, go to the next verse, go to the next verse, go to the next verse. Praising God and having, the ability for you to have favor is dependent on your house. Your house plays a big role in the purpose of God. And that is why it is important for you to understand that your choice depends on what you believe God wants you to do. That is why that is the first place the devil wants to attack. If he can attack at the house, he's attacked the church. They went from house to house. Maybe you should give me the two. Or let me just come my Bible. Before. So they broke bread, continued daily with one accord in the temple. Continued daily in one accord with the temple. So the temple leads into the house. The house feeds back into the temple. He said, when they went from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. They start in the temple. They, they go into house to house. The, you see, your house 
is a source of a blessing to the temple and to yourself. Your house must be an open house where people can come and, and have simplicity and gladness of heart. I don't know how I got into that. Many people do not realize the importance of their house. You think your house is you, somebody else, and two children. Once I can have a boy and a girl, that's okay. But you do not understand that your house is for breaking bread and bringing gladness that feeds back into the temple. Your house is supposed to be a winning soul forum where people around you in your neighborhood, in your arena, at your workplace can come. Your, your house is supposed to be the first point of call. We have a simple prayer, Bible study meeting in, uh, uh, um, just for one hour. And then from there begins to transcend and feed back into the temple. But many of us, we, want, we, we say, oh, we, we've become so posh. So, 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 so dignified that we don't want nobody coming to our house. I don't want anybody coming to my house. Even when we start, I care. I don't know. I don't want I care in my house. I like my privacy. That is why you're not finding favor. An ability to find favor comes from your house being open for breaking of bread. The breaking of bread is not supposed to be on the first Sunday of the month. And breaking of bread is not communion because don't get into this. Uh, now I've got the wine. Now I've got the bread. That's not. You see, let me let me let me shock a lot of people. Breaking of bread, even in the new in, in, in that place, did not refer to communion. Breaking of bread actually means to say fellowship. We're sharing. No, not the ritual that you do. You can break bread 365 days in a year and there has no effect. Why? Because that's not really what the Bible was saying in the book of Acts. What the Bible was saying is that my house is open as a blessing. Many people, you want to get married, they say, oh, oh me and my husband. You have missed the added to the church daily. You have missed the favor of God. Your house is supposed to be an extension of being a blessing to someone. I don't know how I got into this this morning. This just has, but, but, but maybe many people have, have de you're, you're developing your house or even if you're not married, you've developed a mentality that by the time I, 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 you know, I want my house to be like this, I want my house to be like that, and so, and so, so, so I will go out and come in and say, me and my husband and my two children. But that's not the, that the house is supposed to be an extension of God's blessing upon your life that feeds back into the temple. With simplicity, with simplicity of heart. The reason why your house is not open is because you don't have simplicity of heart. Simplicity of heart means that I'm, I just live a simple life where I'm just going to be a blessing to everybody. We heard of a story in, in the elder, um, um, last elders meeting where w w a sister of one of our elders met somebody in the, in the supermarket, I think supermarket or, 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 or someone, and the person didn't have anywhere to live. Never met her before, never, or me never met the person before, never known the person. I don't know how they got into the discussion. They didn't have anywhere to live. Said, okay, come and live in my house. Don't know how long they stayed in the house. But we don't talk him. You know, there's something that I found out. A guy wrote a particular book. Even though I don't agree totally with the book, I see the sense. Zivosh. He wrote a particular book and said, God is asleep. Actually, he said, God is on holiday. And in, in, in looking at the book, even though I don't agree with him, I see the sense. What he was saying is that how can God be alive and 
people, young children are perishing and there is genocide and there is and the and the, the 900 and something people are drowning while trying to make them um, 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 access into the place who's giving examples of that and all the atrocities that god must be on holiday or god must be asleep then he now goes further now this is where the key is he now says that the, the youth many things if god is on holiday or god is asleep it means that it is now our turn to do the stuff. So, what he was saying now, if I want to interpret it Pentecost, in, in the Pentecostal terms, many things that we pray about do not need to pray about, we need to act. Oh, Father, we pray for souls. No. No. It's a wrong prayer. Really. We can pray, we can pray in a distance. God, you no, know, the only time where we're supposed to pray that prayer is that God, we are going out today. Bring me in favor with somebody that I can win. Even those who are perishing and the children and the genocide is because we are not acting. The church, the church doesn't have a voice, the church doesn't do anything. Oh, if like, oh, oh, the church, church doesn't, the church doesn't have this. The church doesn't have this. The church doesn't have this. I don't. It's, it's because we are not acting. He said, if God is asleep and God is on holiday, then somehow, somewhere, the responsibility is now for us to act. We talk about loving our neighbor, but do we really act in loving our neighbor? The guy gave a parallel of Marxism, and those are some of the things that I don't, the, the, don't, don't agree with. But sometimes, I mean, they, I mean, these are theological stuff. Uh, uh, but sometimes, when you read those things, you want to really take a step back. And he said that Marxism is the closest thing to Jesus Christ's ministry. This is not a solid Christian. And I was, I was getting angry. No, you should read this again. He says, because Marxism is about the poor. Taking care of the poor. Destroying capitalism and making everybody have access. So, he said, he said, he said, go back to verse 45. Go, let me see what verse 45 says. Well, okay. And so, the, go 44. This, well, my sermon has suddenly disappeared somewhere. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Stop there. Man, that's, that's, that's a type of, even though I didn't agree with it. But he's saying that, look, the closest to Jesus' ministry, <laughs> I was making a parallel, was juxtapositioning it to, to, to the Russian Marxism, is that Jesus was all about the poor, about the sick, about saving souls. He says the church is no more about that. The church is all about everything else than helping, loving, sowing, reaching out. Now, next verse. Typical example. Sow their possessions and goods divided them among all yes. as anyone had need yes. the church we will not do that we would rather say let me just pray the church has a need father in the name of jesus meets the need of the church meet the need of what do you have he says there is there is he said he says i get annoyed with the church praying and not acting we don't we don't we don't act Breaking bread from house to house was that I am welcoming you into my house. Let's fellowship together. And people all around, the next time when you are coming, bring somebody else. And then the house begins to plan on how to be a blessing to others. But because we want to watch the football match, East Enders, Coronation Street, um, which others, um, um, or, or, no, 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 we, 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 we. and so we're wondering why we're not having favor 
with people. He said, the souls divided amongst themselves. Verse 46. So continuing then, he said, the he says, he says, God has gone, God is asleep or has gone on holiday. And the church is not rising up to their responsibility. We don't have a voice. Because everybody just wants to dress up. Me, myself. How, how many times is, is, all we need to do is take an assessment of our prayer points before we begin to know how selfish the church has become. There would only, the only the place would be jam-packed. Jam-packed last week. Yes, because it was about marriage. Then I'm having a finance convention coming up soon. It will be jam-packed. Or that is on this I woke up this morning, it was raining. You know, I just I just feel I just I just feel my left leg just go underneath me. We're all about signs and wonders, and the church has no business with signs and wonders and miracles because that's not for us, it's for the world. We are already in Christ. And many times, and sometimes, we might not be healed. Let me so give you some news that you won't want to hear. Paul said, "My grace." He said, "I asked God to meet." I said, "My grace is sufficient for you." So go in that power, heal the sick, raise the dead, and you have grace. As I said, as I said two weeks ago, most of the time we pray to God. God has an answer. That prayer. God has said, "There are always two answers: yes or no." Many times Pentecostals hear the no. They refuse. And God has an answer. God has answered your prayer. He said no. <laughs> he's, he's already told you no, but you just didn't want to listen. And, and then you go, oh, 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 God has answered my prayer. Why? Because you got a yes. There are so many no's that you are not aware of. God bless me with a cat. No. Bless me with a wife. No. Bless me with a husband. No. Bless me, child. No, not yet. And they ate their food with gladness. Whatever. They, why did they eat their food with gladness? Because they were not eating their food alone. Many people do not understand that your gladness comes in sharing. Your gladness is wrapped up in being a blessing to others. Have you blessed someone? Look, have you blessed? Now watch this. Let me, when I talk of blessing, let me define blessing. Have you blessed someone that you know can never repay you back? And do you know the feeling that you had? Let me test it. Bless someone unanimously. Bless someone unanimously. See how wonderful you cook, how wonderful your spread is, how wonderful your presentation is. Ask yourself, when last did I invite someone into my house? So let me look, let's let's look at this. They asked Jesus, who is your neighbor who is man? And Jesus gave an illustration of the person, the Samaritan. I don't know where you got the word good Samaritan from. Where did you get the word from? It's not in the Bible. Why? Because it's your actions that determine what people will call you. They were called Christians because they were Christ like. So look at this thing. Somebody was hit by the road. One night we were coming from, I don't know, I think I've shared this before. One night we were coming from a, a prayer meeting that ended like about 12 or something like that. As I was going myself and Emmanuel, we got to this traffic light and there's this guy that broke down. His, his, his bonnet was up. He had um, the extension leads um, to... to uh, Jump, jump leads, 
but nobody was. In fact, what I, what I found funny was people were honking their horn. When they, you saw somebody up with it, and so, so I now, I, I, I now, I, so I looked at the guy. I, 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 I also drove beside him. I looked at the guy. As I was about to go, I said, do you need any help? They said, well, I don't, I, I don't even know. So I stopped there in the middle of the road. Everybody else, fine. Then, then, then I said, what help do you need? He said, you just need to fight. Oh, thank you for, 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 for stopping. I didn't know anybody who else would stop at this time of the night. And then I opened the bonnet of, of the car. I said, oh, you need a jacket. And then when I opened the bonnet of my car, I now found out, hang on, I have two. Because I, I wanted to turn around because I had the feeling that my battery is on the left. So turn around, get inconvenience and everything. I said, okay, let me just open the bonnet. And then, uh, 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 I thought I was, in my help, I now found out that my car has two batteries. If, and I've been driving the car for nearly three years. Four years, actually. So when the Bible says they found favor, your favor which means sometimes coming into an awareness of something might come from blessing somebody else. I would never, I, would have, I could have sold that car, never realizing the potentials that was in the car. Then sometimes you think it's so bad for you until when you begin to bless others and you now begin to find that actually I can be a blessing, you know. Look at the next verse. The Bible says, no, stay there. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And that was what, what I was leading up to. The, the issue of favor. But many times when we talk about favor, we talk about favor in terms of us finding favor with somebody to bless us. But we do not talk about the journey to favor. How did, how did Joseph find favor? He was a slave. Being a blessing. The Bible says, and God was with Joseph and he found favor in the sight of his master. The favor that God has placed upon yourself that will bring you towards kings and queens is the servitude favor first. The favor of being a blessing even when you are a slave. Being a blessing even when people ill treat or mistreat you. Oh, and, and, oh, and can you get me started on Christians? We believe fire must drop from heaven upon all those who ill treat us. We feel that we have a right to curse someone because we are children of God. And then we quote the, the, the touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. That scripture has nothing to do with your responsibility. It was telling the other person, touch not my anointed. Because if you touch my anointed, then you are touching me. Has nothing to do with you doing anything. Has nothing to do with you raising a prayer point for them to die. For God to put corn into their mouth and they choke to death. You know all those prayer points that were for the enemies to just begin to scatter. If you have so much prayer point of enemies scatter, how many enemies do you have? Oh, I remember pastor, the scripture says, Arise, O oh Lord, and let my enemy be scattered. That's when they went to war. Whoa, are you, are you, are you, are you in the army? We are in God's army. No, if you're in God's army, then you must show me how many souls that you have that are depending on you, that you are praying for them, for their enemies. If you, one person, have a thousand enemies, even if you have ten enemies, there's something you are doing wrong. In fact, let me give you some news. Let me give you that. The best way to assess yourself is how many people have you offended? No, how many of you have you been? No, how do I put it? 
How many people have offended you? If there's so many people that have offended you, check yourself first. Because it seems to be one common denominator and various variables. Hello? The journey to favor, because I'm believing God that a favor will come upon our lives and our church. But the journey to favor here was not fasting and praying. Hello, church. The journey to favor was not about expecting somebody to give you favor. The journey to favor was opening their house, opening their food, being a blessing, having joy and simplicity, and the Bible says, and having favor with all people. So, let's take Joseph as an example, as I round up. The Bible says, every way, the Bible says, when Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, the Bible says, and God was with him, and he found favor in the house of Potiphar. Then they slammed him in prison. And the Bible says, and the Lord was with him, and he found favor in the sight of the jailer. And then when he came out of prison, and the, the Bible says, and the Lord was with him, and he found favor in the sight of of the king. But in, do you notice that in all those three positions, he was never the boss. He was always under. Some of the way we quote scripture, I am in charge. I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. Now, and I, and I need to give you some news. Sometimes you have to be the tail to get to the head. Have you played snakes and ladders before? <laughs> Very old concept. Sometimes, you do not start, with, so everybody's waiting till I become the head, till I become the head. The journey to favor starts by you having the resources you have to bless someone. Now, this was not my sermon. But here's the key. Watch this very carefully. What resources did Joseph have that brought him favor? He knew how to work hard. Which is another thing we don't want to hear. Many Christians don't work hard at work. If they assess the most lazy kind of people, those who say they are sick but are shopping at Wortham store. <laughs> Those who manipulate, who, who do things that the office pens are their own personal pens, are the Christians. What do you, in church, what do you have that you use to serve? We've heard of testimonies. Elder Barrow is here. There are many people here who went for an interview. And, and I remember the job I got as, 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 a, as, a, as, as a principal officer as grade winner in, in, in 1999. They asked me, oh, um, okay, you want to have a, how do you manage people? I said, ah, that's very easy. I said, you see, I currently... Um, run a charity. In fact, I'm a pastor. And you know that. And I now began to analyze that. So, and having favor with all people. After I said I'm a pastor and I began to analyze, every other question after that had to do with my church. Now, if you ask me questions about the church, surely I can't fail on that one. However, and so, oh, really? So, how do you cope? He said, huh? Do you have children? So, how do you manage the children? And I said, See, that's, that shows that I can do the job. Because to manage this, I manage. So, said, oh, I know we have conventions and we have to get this department to do this, this department to do this. So, how do you do it? So, they're, they're not, one of the things you need to do is that we don't pay them. So, one of the various ways you need to find if you are a true leader is when you lead volunteers. So, so how, all the question. I now had favor. But the favor didn't start by prayer. 
it started when unknown to me I was going to have an interview many years ago I had started serving hello because I want to get this favor thing in perspective and maybe next week I, I will now begin to break down but the joy, every time you see the word favor upon someone, the Bible says that in the book of Luke chapter 2, I think in verse 40, the Bible says, and, 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 and Jesus grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and God was with him. I think in verse 52, he says, and he continued in wisdom. Give me verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor. So increased in wisdom. And etc. Now, how do you find favor with God and man? It is because you have demonstrated something to people that cause people to say, I like this person. If you are not a hard worker, you won't find favor. If you are not being a blessing to someone, you cannot find favor. How many people have journeyed the journey of favor came by being a blessing to someone and that person you said, you know what? I know somebody who can help. Recently in January we went through some very tough times in establishing the nursery. God is still helping us. But there were one or two things that I know that had happened that Pastor D did that brought her in favor even when she was standing her ground and getting annoyed with one or two people. But because of the process people stepped in so I'll give you an example a practical example the church already has a D1 use D1 use means that you can do church you can do some other activities and then they were now saying they were telling us to produce the D1 use. then we produced what the council has given us but there was this enemy those are the times when you now can say arise O Lord there was this guy, he just didn't want, no, it's not what I, so we applied, so okay, we we'll apply again, applied one week, two weeks, three weeks, after some time, I said to her, I said, you know, let's get this, let's take it easy, you know, she's the one that takes it, me, let's get the counselor and other people, they owe us, when things in the I down frame the letter, I said, pass it over, Just copy the head of the council, copy all the counselors and everything, By the end of the day, the answer has come. The initial answer had come already by the end of the day. Because one of the counselors, many years ago, we had done certain things that had honored him. We have not spoken to him for years, but immediately he saw Caris. Because we had served the community in a certain capacity. That when we needed favor, it came. Because I want to deliver you from a hunger strike. Because many of you that are praying and fasting is because we're not acting. How can you find faith? How, have you seen somebody who's visited your house before? Saw somebody and said, you know what? I can help you repair that thing. That thing has been there for a long time. In fact, it's become part of the furniture that is damaged. And then somebody comes in because you invited them and said, oh, what are you saying? Oh, it's been damaged. Really? I can repair that. I can help you sell it. I can help you do something. You now find favor in that person because you first acted. Joseph was a servant but did well. Found favor. When he became a prisoner, he didn't moan about God. Why did you bring me into prison? He might have moaned. But did not stop him from doing his job well. Oh, I don't like the job. I mean, God, how can you give me the job? Then do it well. It is in doing it well that they can recommend you for a better one. Hello, Christians. Okay, hello, born again. Because now, don't you be very. It is Jesus found favor because he grew in wisdom and in stature. Hello? 
Father, oh God, God, let me find favor in the sight of my wife. What are you doing? Hello, what have you done? That will bring you into favor. Oh, Father, I don't need favor. I don't, I don't need my husband. I don't need my wife. Stay there. You will learn in the hard way. All of us need favor, even in the sight of our children. Because the day you grow up, amen, and even though you can drive, you don't feel like driving. And you can call on your child and say, can you take me for this appointment? If you don't have favor that you have done before, and you always keep on telling your children, I don't need you. Some people say, you know, sometimes I look at some parents, and you know, they annoy me. Well, I, that's why I'm taking care of myself, so that when I'm old, I will not depend on you. Ah. It is not in monetary terms. I might just need my lone mode. Mold. And I want my children to come and help. Actually, I might even want my children, I might need their favor so that they can drop off their grandchildren with me. My grandchildren. Oh, you don't think you need favor in that area? You think that is automatic? It's not. Not in this country anyway. But every favor requires to first be on the journey of blessing. Did I hear an amen? amen? So let's, how are we going to be a blessing to our generation? Do you know that that soul that you refuse to preach to, minister to, pray for, that person who was sick, and you could have just said, silver and gold I have not, but do you mind if I pray for you? Actually, you know, I will say a word of prayer, because now everything seems to be very, um, what's the word now? politicized on stuff. But in the political arena, there is wisdom. So they share some wisdom. You, you know what? I believe in prayer, so I will pray for you later on. Say, so, well, would you? Once they say, would you? I, say, I can pray for you now. But it's the best. <laughs> but unless we become a blessing, when we, are, when we open our house, to become, to break bread with simplicity and gladness. Do you know that some people have opened their house? Their house has become... Let me share this testimony. Okay, I have one. Let me share this testimony. In 2004, December, in those days we used to allow the youths to come to our house. They used to flood out because most of them, their parents dumped them in, their country, in this country. Christmas can be a very lonely time. So one, we remembered four years before that, we just asked one person, so how are you spending Christmas? I don't know. Either. Really? So what are you going to do for Christmas? There was nothing. So we decided, you know what? Let's start inviting these guys to come and spend Christmas in our house. Started by, with about five, went to 20, 40. The last count when we stopped, because now they are married, they have their own family, was 77. I remember that day. In fact, my neighbor was, a, was wondering how on earth can you have 77 people in the house? But I remember 2004 when we invited, when the youth came around. Very small house we had then. While, we, while, while everything was going on, when they were about to leave, and they don't leave early. <laughs> they don't leave early. When I say when they're about to leave, we're talking of like about 2 a.m., 2.30 one of them said, you know, pastor, next year, I'm believing God that you will have a bigger house and, in, and mentioned a particular area that the guy had no idea that we have been believing God for for a long, for a long time, but we felt it's beyond our capacity. The guy just said, man. because then I just looked at ourselves and we shouted, amen, 2004, December. By August, we had moved to that area that we felt was impossible. We found favor in the sight of the boy that caused the boy to prophesy and took us to a journey of where we never believed we would be told. If we didn't open our house, how would the boy prophesy? Favor comes by serving. Did I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Bow your heads where you are. Let's pray.
in this short prayer, I want you to meditate. How can I be a blessing? Some of you, it might just be opening your house up. Some of you might just be using your gifts and talents in the church. You're sitting there. The church needs you to help. Some of you, you might just be a financier of the gospel. So anytime you hear a need in church, pastor, I'm there. Because that's what God has called you to do. Some of you, God might just want you to start a ministry within the church. Some of you, you might just want to join I care and say, look, my house is available anytime. Some of you, you might just want to drive the church bus and say, anywhere they want to go anywhere, I'm available. Because you are expecting favor, and when I talk to you about the favor that comes upon the life of a servant, because you're expecting favor at work, favor in your job, favor at home, favor in your neighborhood, favor everywhere. How can I be a blessing, Lord? Why don't you see yourself, your house open? Why? So, so, some of you, in fact, no, some of you, all of us, it's by preaching to someone. Waking up in the morning and say, as I sit on the bus, somebody will touch me. You can't just live life without being a blessing. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says they went from house to house. Breaking bread. With simplicity and gladness. And they found favor with all the people. Father, I want Caris to enter into this kind of favor. So, Lord, help us to be a blessing. Everywhere we go, our first instinct would be to bless people, to bless our nation, to bless our church, to bless our families, to go out of our way to be a blessing. Because that is what Christ did. And the whole city will turn out. Because he was always there to be a blessing. Let this mind be of us also. So that the favor of the Lord will multiply upon our lives. We give you praise. In Jesus name we pray. Now let me, let me share this as we close. Watch this. This is very important. Listen to this. Listen to this. Watch me. During the Queen's Queen's celebration, what was that? Jubilee. During the Queen's Jubilee. In our neighborhood, one day, Pastor D was saying, ah, 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 why is our neighborhood not going to do any street parties? Uh, my friends said, don't get it. I don't know. You know I, oh, so I was like, ah, why is our neighborhood not going to do it? Uh, 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 what, what of course, I knew that that question has some things. Uh, so so uh, what, let, let the, when, if God wants the neighborhood, see, religion, religion. If God wants the neighborhood to celebrate, he will pick someone. Uh, so why not us? Uh, anyway, I kept quiet. So she, she now started typing and, and, and spoke to Christine, got Christine on board, got Emmanuel on board, and then they now went out to all our neighborhood, putting things through the door, saying that as our neighborhood not wanted to do 
um, a street party. I'm inviting a street party. If you are interested, please meet me at 6 p.m. in front of my house. I said, why didn't you say down the road? Now everybody will know where we're living. <laughs> Some places, they will put in it. And as they put in it, the door will open. Oh, thank you. I was thinking about it. But nobody was there. So she said, don't forget, please, with all humility. We are the only black person in that, around that area. So for me, there was also another, mm, hallelujah. Anyway, she did. And, and then on Wednesday, on the, on, it was on a Thursday, they were supposed to meet at 6 p.m. I was looking at her. I said, you see, nobody has gathered. Nobody has gathered. But you know, white people are always on time. There's no Zimbabwe time, Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Indonesian time. 6 p.m. By 6 p.m., just one minute to 6, no, 6 p.m., nearly, how many people? In fact, Everybody, you were hearing buzzing outside. So, I, I, yeah, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> so they got outside. I acted as if I wasn't the husband, just behind <laughs> the seat. But I don't know why I was doing that because there were only two black people there. So they should have known who the other. So anyway, it went on. It's, it went, they did. Everywhere, everybody was saying, Oh, D, thank you for thinking about this. Anyway, we had the street party. This year, so that was many years ago. This year, Christine needed a volunteering sector in a particular area. She phoned up this place. They said she should come, that they want to just see that there's no space, but they just want. So we went. I followed her. We got there. We sat down. So the boss came to interview us. While they were interviewing, they now said, oh, there's a... Oh, um, would you be able to have access? Where, where do you? And I answered. Christine's supposed to be answered. I was the answer. I said, Oh, we live in Brentwood. So we're in Bonnington. Bonnington. When they said Bonnington, the three, two people, three people were interviewing. So he said, ah, But that's where it is. Bonnington, where? Say number three. Oh, hey, are you this of me? They didn't know me. Are you? <laughs> are you this husband? I said, Yes. Oh, this. Of course. End of, end of interview. End of interview. Favor straight. Because of the servitude many years ago. This thing works. It is not speaking in tongues. It is by action. So I didn't know that my daughter was going to benefit many years ago when I was stopping and saying, what is your own business? That if God wanted to, that is what we normally say. Let's bless God for our tithes and offerings.